Yeah, so today will be um, our last week kind of tackling soft skills. And then the last, I think, three weeks will be all about building your portfolio, perfecting your CV, and also LinkedIn optimization. So this will be our last topic in terms of, um, yeah, in terms of soft skills. And the last one is um, understanding different decision-making frameworks. Um, decision-making is one of the major um, things that we have to deal with every day, even in our personal lives. And Sorry, um, I think my internet dropped for a while. Yeah, so like I was saying, today will be the last. Um, yeah, so it's important for us to understand. Understand the different framework that can guide us to. Um, Okay, so with this, we just a brief of what we're going to talk about today is, yeah, just a brief of what you're going to talk about today is just a small introduction about what decision making is, um, the types of decisions that we make, whether they're rational or irrational, and the different frameworks that can kind of guide us to make certain decisions and then we'll also go through the different categories of decisions that need to be made and another framework uh, which is regret minimization framework and just some extra tips um so can anyone just say something about how decision making is relevant in our place if um if you have like a a story or yeah something to just an example of some of the decisions that need to be made in a workplace it could be um something simple like So, yeah, it could be something simple like choosing what technology to use. Um, so the question is on, it's on the presentation. So how is decision making relevant in the workplace? And if you have examples. Okay, so for my side, I think that um, decision making is basically about um, the actions that um, we take uh, to to get things done, uh, to achieve uh, business objectives or the organizational goals, um, to manage resources, um, to bring in um, the cash flows, and then. I mean, it's, it's the whole machine of the of the organization. It's like the lifeblood of the organization. Yeah. So, I think that uh, for me, yes, uh, it's important as as anything that we do because without deciding or taking action, nothing will happen. So, decision drives the organization. Um, thanks, thanks, Bernard. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I'm sorry, my internet keeps dropping today. It's very unstable. I don't know why. 
Um, but yeah, it is basically the lifeline of an organization trying from the sim the whole goal is to streamline business manage resources very well and yeah thanks for that um so I'm just gonna so yeah like bernard has said it's just the process that we engage in when we're faced with choices or dilemmas that require a course of action or a solution so basically, decisions are sometimes influenced by either rationality or emotions. And when we talk about rationality, we're talking about making things and sometimes emotions can override logic um, and that's the other kind of uh, how sometimes we make decisions so sometimes you make a decision based of emotion um, that sometimes An example could be um, making a business decision based off of instincts instead of uh, following the data. So that could be one. Um, but I think in business, it's always good to lean into making decisions with rationality, with perfect logic, with reason, with substantial data, and reason to support your decision uh, because it really influences um, how you how the business moves forward. Um, so under rationality, uh, there are different factors that could affect um, how you make decisions. So it could be from personal values and beliefs. And this is um, kind of in making choices based on things like morals or ethics or just your basic cognitive biases um, I think there are over a hundred different types of cognitive biases but a good example would be how sometimes on this on supermarket stalls you're given um, yeah you're given a promo and then it's Kind of triggering to believing oh i'm getting these things for cheaper that could be one of the um cognitive biases again there are like a hundred different types of cognitive biases i think if you go to wikipedia i can have a look at let me just share this page the different biases that exist um yeah so if you look at this there's always the cognitive bias codex and this is it has like very many types of um biases so if you, if you zoom into one um yeah so there could be something like um which one is easy? Yeah, so for example, this one to stay focused, we favor the immediate, most rel relatable things to us. So, um, since you're used to a set.
so no one really wants to always go against the law because that's that's one type of a cognitive bias um yeah and it's based off of things that you're supposed to do things that are of routine and yeah so basically you can read more about But a certain idea or topic. Um, yeah, so aside from that, there's another thing that could affect how you make your decision is the amount of information you have. You could have How you make decision making um, the higher, the better your decision making skills, uh, because then you'll be making decisions out of concrete um, data, data points. Um, yeah, so if you have less information about a certain topic, you might tend to miss out on certain things, and that could somehow make you uh, make you have like a limited choices in terms of the decisions that you have to make um yeah so that's another way it can affect how you make a decision so it's always good to have to gather as much information as we can before we make a decision um the other thing is the risk and reward perception and this is basically just how risk and rewards are perceived and kind of influence the decision with um so if we if if you see something so for example previously you tried um so if something you know has more risk you will tend to not choose that certain thing but if it has a certain reward you'll tend to make a decision based off of rewards um some humans tend to lean in towards risk because high risk high um, high risk, high reward, but again, some would make a decision based off of just what exactly will I get from making this decision. If I do, if I choose to go A or B, will I make which influence a lot of the choices that we make on a day-to-day -day basis so if last time you chose path a and it wasn't successful the next time you'll tend to choose path b because you're trying out a new to see if it's going to work if from your previous experiences you tried this specific method and it worked that will kind of guide have worked um all along um so that's on making decisions with uh rationale then there's the other side which is making um decisions based off of emotions or sometimes irrational decision making so the most basic one is emotions and moods um, sometimes strong emotions or sometimes if you have fluctuating moods can kind of override that rational thinking which is what you need to have when making business decisions or yeah when making business decisions and that can kind of lead you to make impulsive or emotionally charged decisions as opposed to uh, making rational decision based off of reason um, other thing could be cultural influence. So it's normal for each and every one of us to kind of belong to a certain culture and you have norms that you practice in the same culture. 
and each and every culture has certain expectations uh, that you're supposed to follow and that can kind of shape the kind of decisions that you make and this could be conscious or unconscious and yeah it can kind of force individuals to conform into societal or cultural pressures um the other thing is time constraints so uh if you have limited time that can make you to um uh, that can make you to make rash decisions which i think if we we're going to look at one of the frameworks which is the jeff bezos framework and he is on his framework he documents that it's important to make decisions um, quickly and on time if you're short on time you have to make a decision and that can kind of influence um, the kind of choice that you make the other thing could be physical health uh, physical factors which includes just your physical health whether you're feeling fatigued sometimes when you're tired and um, or you're just discomfortable you, you choose to do the easy things as opposed to um, doing yeah you choose to do the easy things uh, because you're just tired um, yeah it kind of also affects your judgment or rationality and then we have the culture and environment which is basically what's what what environment surrounds you can heavily influence the kind of decisions that you make and as humans sometimes we tend to make choices that um some that uh for you to either fit in or gain some acceptance or conform into a group norm um but again that's not the case for every human some humans don't uh try to fit in and they just make their own decisions yeah Okay, Kasa. Yeah, that's that's fine. You'll find the recording on YouTube uploaded. Um. Okay. Uh, enjoy your meeting. So, let's look at let's look at um. Okay, yeah, so I think that's much more clear now, I hope. Um, so yeah, one of the frameworks we're going to look at is um, the Jeff Bezos framework. And this is basically just I demanded how exactly he makes his decisions. And then um, one of the things that he mentions is you have to understand the two different types of decisions that you have to make in a day to day basis. So we have type one and type two decisions. So um, type one decisions are basically the long term. Uh, decisions that have a long-term effect and they are kind of very irreversible so if you yeah type one are very irreversible so it could be something that you cannot undo and once you've gone through it there's no way you can go back um an example not a professional example but something like um giving birth or having a baby, that's a decision that you make. And once you make that decision, you're, there's no going back from it. It's, uh, 
two decisions are you can kind of reverse them and they don't have much um, consequences so for example this could be a small thing for example choosing to um, miss a meeting and then you go to sleep um, <laughs> that's a bad thing but it doesn't a substantial simple um, example um, so basically just with reversible with type 2 decisions it's uh, very yeah it's so uh, yeah it's something that you can kind of uh, it doesn't have a lot of consequence and you can kind of um, reverse your the decisions that you've made um, so for type one decisions he suggests for you to hit pause and think about it really well because there's no go there's no going back once you make that decision so with that you have to do a lot of research um, before you make your decision take as much time as you can and then uh, the second one is explore the possible scenarios this is still under type one decision we're in this quadrant here so these are the, the ones that have a very high consequence and you cannot undo them. So once you do a lot of research on them, you kind of explore the different possible scenarios. What happens if I choose part A, uh, if I choose B or C, and then kind of quantify and look at the kind of risks involved in each. And then you decide rationally. So rationally, with reason, with logic, and very carefully. So for, for type one, you plan for the worst and then you step softly. Um, and then we have three different types of type two decisions. So there are decisions that are kind of irreversible and uh, they don't have any consequence. Um, so with that, it's good to review uh, already available data and then decide on the spot based on experience that you've had and then we have another type 2 decision which is uh, a reversible decision you can reverse it for a reversible decision could be um, you're choosing who your supplier could be so it could be this So if you tend to have that kind of analysis paralysis where you take um, a long time to think, to make a decision because you simply can't choose both of them look, um, both of them have like equal pros and cons and sometimes you can be stuck, okay, which where, where so um if you go here so this is what so there's a link you can go read more about it um but what he says is you have to somehow make high quality high velocity decisions in business speed matters a lot plus a high on the spot exactly based on experience and then set a reminder to check the outcome and then you can consider changing the cost this could be also in terms of um, example supplier a supplier b and then we have another type of type 2 decision which is uh, kind of reversible and has
collectible data, understand the milestones, so when the decision can be reversed versus when it has impact, and then decide again rationally based on data, and then um, set a review or schedule based on milestones. So with this map of four different types of decisions to make, <coughs> sorry, uh, when you met with certain decisions, it would be would be nice for you to come and look at this map and see where does this decision that I have to make, where exactly does it fall? And um, what does, what do I do with it? So this is just a framework to guide you. Um, yeah um for the people especially if you're if you're working on a, on an agile project that means um very tight deadlines very um a lot of work that needs to be done you're controlling a big team you have to make high quality high velocity decision because in business, speed matters. And instead of taking a whole week or a whole month to make a decision, um, make that decision today. And kind of, if even if you're failing on the decision, uh, it's it also supports this uh, phrase that always says, um, "fail faster." So if you make this decision early, you'll you'll very early. You'll know, you'll know exactly if you made the right decision very early instead of uh, waiting for a long time to make a decision. Um, yeah, so the other kind of framework, which is basically almost similar or has similar concepts to uh, the Jeff Bezos framework is the regret minimization framework. And this is basically a framework that looks at, <clears throat> kind of looks at into the future and you kind of see what kind, uh, the kind of risks that are involved in each and every decision that you make and then make a decision based off of what you, what you think about uh, or how you see this decision affecting your future. So it's basically, uh, yeah, it's basically the first step is project. So this is about thinking about yourself in the f in your final years. So, um, yeah, thinking about yourself in the next maybe 10 or 20 years. And this could be making decisions, for example, trying to choose a career path. You're looking at, okay, if I follow this path in the next 10 or 20 years, in the next future this will involve a lot of reflection so think about um, how exactly will I feel in the next 20 years still on this path will I will I be happy will I um, will I not will I have uh, will I be excited or anxious um, And yeah, also thinking about analyze. So um, if your body and mind both tell you that regretting it would be much, much worse than trying and failing, then you're almost ready to go. And then um, kind of observe if your older self is happy with this decision. If it is, move on with it. If your older self is not happy with the decision that you're making today, um, then it's not the right thing to do. And this will help you when you're uh, making long-term decisions. Um, yeah, and then the final one is to react. So once, the, once you've already made a decision, you act on the decision that you've made. Um, so if you feel like following this path will make you very happy in the next 20 years, then you have to just start now and act on it. Um, that was, yes, yeah, that was the other framework. 
Um, I'll add a link for you to read more about this. There's more that I've just came through. Um, but generally, just tips on decision making. Um, decisions are best made when you have very powerful information. So if you have a lot of data, a lot of reason, a lot of information to support your decisions, um, that will make a really strong decision for you to make. And sometimes they don't have to be perfect to work. Um, you just have to try, especially if it's a type two decision, uh, you just have to try the different types and fail faster and see fail faster or win faster, whichever works. Um, so they don't have to be perfect to work. There's always time to improve. And um, yeah, there's always time to improve and perfect your decisions. And this is this only works if the decision that you're making is reversible. And then also consider the time factor. So are you are you are you strict? Uh, is there a time constraint on it? Um, in the next ten years, how will I feel about this decision? In the next one week, how will I feel about making this decision? And the other thing is to simplify and minimize the decision. So remove the many noises. Sometimes you could have a lot of um, decisions that you're supposed to make, but some are not really relevant. So kind of clear that clutter in your head. And then it's always good to talk to mentors. And this could be someone who's experienced in the industry that you're trying to make a decision in. Um, if it's something about um, implementing a certain project using a new technology and it's very new for you, so it's good for you to talk to someone who's already experienced in that industry to kind of give you more information before you make that decision. If it's something about um, hiring and firing, talk to people who've already been in that industry for a very long time to give you that guidance. And then the other thing is to gather enough data um, to strongly influence the type of decisions you make. <clears throat> Sorry, so the so last thing we're going to look at is the different um, decision-making scenarios. be platform for a new digital marketing campaign. Is there a hand? Okay, how long has how long has it been? Um, so yeah, we were just finishing up on the different decisions that um, different scenario, different um, decision making scenarios in our place. Um, so it could be you're trying to uh, do digital marketing, and you have different platforms. So it could be choosing where sh where do we find most of our target customers? Is it on Facebook? Is it on LinkedIn? Is it here? Um, that could be another decision to make. Um, how to handle a difficult client. Um, this difficult clients are always everywhere in, in businesses. So how exactly can you handle that? Should you maybe offer them a discount or have like a stand firm on the decisions that you've made? That, that will also kind of influence your customer support. Um, service in your industry and how exactly will that affect your company or your business going forward um the other thing is deciding another scenario is deciding the best way to respond to a co-worker's invitation to a happy hour event you could maybe this is a very informal one but you it could be you have a lot of work um that you have to do or um you just went yeah yeah, it could be you have a lot of work or you just want to go, but still a decision to make. It's 
minor the small decisions but it's still a decision making um scenario um yeah this are just the different scenarios that you could face in uh, a workplace so for this week's tutorial um sorry yeah for for this week's challenge um it's basically um yeah it's basically on decision making and then as usual you have two scenarios and we would like to see your thought process through the selection of the decisions you've made so before you come into a decision um uh we yeah for the instructions is to from the scenarios given is it a type one or a type two decision and why exactly do you feel like that's a type one or type two decision so basically understanding the different types of decisions that you have to make and then document your thought process or decision making process and this could be if i go with a these are the pros and these are the cons and then from the pros and cons that you listed uh which one weighs more and then give your reason uh, to Hi, colleagues. I don't know if if anybody can hear me. I think she's having some network challenge at her end. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
No, you're not audible. Not audible. Um, Hello, are um, we are we still together? Um, yeah. So I think we were just getting done. I'm sorry about that. My internet um, has been acting up a lot today. I'll try to get that fixed. 
Uh, but we were just getting done, I think. Uh, we we're already done with the tutorial. It was just a brief of the exercise. So if you have any questions or concerns about the exercise for this week, feel free to um, give me a shout on Slack. Or if you have a question now, you can just go ahead and ask. Um, but otherwise, we can end our meeting there for now. Yes. All right. Th thank you for the presentation. I actually I joined late, and um, I, I I I guess this is about career uh, career talk, but I I have yet to receive the career challenge. Is it part of the what we just discussed now uh, for this uh, week? I think the career challenge has not been posted. Um, yes, so last week I shared a drive, so I don't know if everyone got it, but let me share it here. Yeah, and, and, and can we get the, the, the video, recording, recorded video for this? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so um, it takes, it takes about 30 minutes for 30 minutes to an hour for Google to send the recording to email. Once it's sent, um, we're going to upload it immediately. Um, so there's this channel on Slack for all the recordings and we'll post it there before, before 9 p.m. East African time. Okay, perfect. Yes. Thank you for your questions and being here. So I've sent the link on chat. Hope you can see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any other question or concern from anyone? Sorry, the submission for the career is it still Wednesday or, or or the final submission will be made together with it? Um, so it's on October 4th, so on Friday. Um, okay. Yeah, MUTC, yeah. Uh, let me know if you have access to both the documents inside the drive. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so I checked and then um, it gives me only view, only access, and then I think it's just one document. It's just one document. Yeah, uh, with the view, only access. Okay. Uh, right. Let me share the drive link instead.
Okay. Hello. Hello. You are yet to see the the link. Yeah, I think we will call it today. Probably she will share it on Slack or maybe in an email. All right, that's that better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, hello, Wendy. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Wendy? 